In this video, we'll use the wedge product in geometric algebra to solve an exact two-variable linear system. Then we'll show that when the system vectors have dimension 2, this method of solution is equivalent to Kramer's rule. We'll then solve the projective best fit problem, also for an inexact two-variable system. Finally, we'll show that our geometric best fit solution, expressed compactly with geometric algebra, is equivalent to the conventional calculus-based least squares optimization solution. Suppose that we want to solve two-variable problem ax plus by equals c, where a, b, and c are vectors in some n-dimensional vector space. We can do this with the wedge product by wedging both sides of the equation with either a or b. For example, if we wedge from the right with b, we find a wedge b x plus b wedge b y equals c wedge b. But b wedge b is zero by definition of the wedge product. We're left with a wedge b all times x equals c wedge b. In geometric algebra, the quotient of two wedge products is well defined. So we can just write x equals one over a wedge b all times c wedge b, solving for x. If we want to solve for y, we simply have to wedge with a. Let's wedge the whole equation on both sides with a from the left. After distribution, we have a wedge a times x plus a wedge b times y equals a wedge c. But a wedge a is zero, so we're left with a wedge b all times y equals a wedge c. Again, we can divide our bivectors, forming y equals one over a wedge b all times a wedge c. When the system is an exact system, the bivectors a wedge b, c wedge b, and a wedge c will all be scalar multiples of each other. The result is a scalar. We can write out a bivector, for example, a wedge b in component form. In R2, this simplifies down to a single determinant, determinant of the vector components of a and b, all times the unit bivector e1, e2. Substituting that into our expressions for x and y, we're left with, having cancelled our unit bivectors e1, e2, a ratio of determinants. In the denominator, we have the, the determinant of the components of a and b. In the numerators, we have the determinants of the components of either c, b, or a, c, depending which variable we're solving for. This is Kramer's rule solution for a two-variable system. Let's go through some numerical examples, define some basis vectors. These are all vectors of length 1 in each of the 1, 2, 3 directions. And I have a function here for computing the solution and showing the solution. The computing part is easy. It's just a couple lines. The meat of it is multiply the wedge product and the inverse wedge product, and again, the, the AC wedge product and the inverse of IAB wedge product. Let's see that for some specific cases. The first case I'm going to take is an exact system where you take vectors A and B in the XY plane and a linear combination of those vectors AB. I'm going to show those vectors ABC and the linear combinations as well as showing the solution. Let's run that. Here's the illustration of the geometry of the problem, 2a plus 3b equals c, and that's an exact solution. We expect an exact solution. So we have a, uh, the system we're trying to solve, ax plus by equals c. There's our a, b, and our c. And if we compute each of the wedge products, we see that in each case, the wedge products are scalar multiples of each other of the unit bivector e12, the bivector for the xy plane. So ab is that unit bivector, cb is two times that, ac is three times that. So taking ratios, x equals two and y equals three. That is the computed solution. Here's another example. In this case, I'm not restricting ourselves myself to the xy plane. So we have vectors that include my a vector includes portions that are in x, y, and z directions, my b is in x and y directions, and c is still that same linear combination of the two. Let me illustrate this, it should look pretty similar. There's my a and b, and if we take three b's plus two a's, we should end up with a c. That solution, in this case, so we add, right here's our ABCs reiterated, and our wedge products. And now in this case, our AB wedge product is three times E12 minus two E23 plus E31. And we see that each of our vectors, our bivectors are our scalar multiples of each other of that A wedge B bivector. We expect that because this is, it was constructed as an exact system. 
So we have two times and three times the a wedge b by vector in each case. So we find our solution is x equals 2 and y equals 3, as we expected. Now, if we introduce an error into the mix, here's our original example of a and b in the xy plane. c is 2a plus 3b. And if we introduce a factor that is in the direction e3 in the z hat direction, we will not have a system that can be solved exactly. So if we illustrate this, let's see the geometry before we look at the solution. Here's the geometry. We have again 2a plus 3b and we have c. Now in this case we have c has a component that lies outside of the xy plane. It has a component c parallel that lies in the xy plane. This component c perpendicular or c perp uh, if we were trying to solve the system, the best we can do is to find the C parallel that is a superposition of A and B. And that should be, C parallel should be 2A plus 3B. And there will be a component that we cannot solve for. If we try to solve this using the method that we constructed, we find here's our A wedge B again is E12. Now, C wedge B and A wedge C are no longer our scalar multiples of each other of our A wedge B. We happen to have C wedge B including two and three times the A wedge B component, but it also we have components that include the E13 bivector components. Should we divide these out, assuming that we have a solution, we now have a multivector as a result when we expected a scalar. We have x equals 2 plus a bivector and y equals 3 plus a bivector. It's these bivector terms in the solution that we have to come up with a method of dealing with those. We see here we had 2 and 3 though, and those strongly hints that what we want to do is we want to select out only the scalar portion of these bivector quotients. We'll see why that's the case in a sec. We may not be able to solve an arbitrary second degree equation, ax plus by equals c. However, if we decompose our vector c into portions that are parallel and perpendicular to the plane by writing c equals i inverse i times c, and then expanding i times c as i dotted with c plus i wedge c, we resolve the parallel and perpendicular components of c. We can always solve the projection problem, ax plus by equals c parallel. We immediately write the solutions for x and y. We can reduce either of these in a nice way, eliminating the c parallel in favor of c. Because these bivectors are scalar multiples of each other, introducing a dot product does not change the result. Now we can write out c parallel as c minus c perp and distribute. The second multivector product is zero because it's proportional to the cosine of the angle between the two bivectors, which are at 90 degrees. That leaves us with x equals 1 over a wedge b dotted with c wedge b. Similarly, y is 1 over a wedge b dotted with a wedge c. We found a compact geometric algebra representation for the solution of a two-variable problem of best geometric fit. We expect to find the same result if we solve the equivalent least squares problem using conventional calculus methods. The setup for the least squares problem is the construction of a distance squared error function. Call this epsilon equals c minus ax minus by all squared. We want to tackle this extreme value problem and find the minimum error. To find our minimum error, we take partial derivatives with respect to x and y. The partial derivative of epsilon with respect to x is just 2 times c minus ax minus by all times minus a. And the partial derivative of epsilon with respect to y is the same thing dotted with minus b. Equating each of these to zero, we can write this as a two-variable system in matrix form. Solving this matrix equation is left as an exercise for the viewer. What you should find is the following mess expressions for x and y. Careful observation will show that the numerators and denominators can both be written as dot products of wedge products. In particular, for x, the numerator is a wedge b dotted with b wedge c. The denominator in both cases is minus a wedge b squared. Observe that we have a wedge b in both the numerator and denominator. 
a wedge b divided by a wedge b squared is the inverse of a wedge b. We're able to simplify finding the expression for x as x equals 1 over a wedge b dotted with c wedge b. For y, we have a similar result. We can see that the numerator is a negative a wedge b dotted with a wedge c, and the denominator again is minus a wedge b squared. We have a wedge b divided by the scalar a wedge b squared, which is 1 over a wedge b. Again, we find y equals 1 over a wedge b dotted with a wedge c. This is exactly what we found previously, looking at the purely geometric problem, finding the best fit for the projection of c onto the plane formed by a wedge b. To summarize, we've been considering the linear system ax plus by equals c. We found that the best fit solution for this problem was x equals 1 over the wedge of a wedge b dotted with c wedge b, and y equals 1 over the wedge of a wedge b dotted with a wedge c. In this special case, where the system is exact, we can omit the dot products. In the further special case, where the dimension of the vectors a, b, and c are 2, we found that the solution is equivalent to Kramer's rule. We also showed explicitly that this is the solution to the least squares minimization problem given a distance squared error function c minus ax minus by all squared. These results generalize trivially to linear systems with more than two variables. This video was made with Manum, Mathematica, and DaVinci Resolve. Please like, subscribe, and share for more content of this nature. For more geometric algebra content, check out my blog, peteryo.com, where you'll also find my book, Geometric Algebra for Electrical Engineers, and plenty of other math and physics related content, including latex typeset notes for a number of undergrad and graduate physics and engineering classes.